GlaxoSmithKline, for its part, hopes to have as many as 20,000 doses of its experimental vaccines by year end. Donna Altenpole is vice president of U.S. public policy at GlaxoSmithKline, and she joins us now from Philadelphia. Donald, Donna, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, news over the weekend that a nurse in Dallas has contracted Ebola. How does this change the way that the private sector and public sector address this growing public health crisis? And specifically, what does drug companies like GlaxoSmithKline need the government to do next? Well, I think it's absolutely tragic that this nurse did contract the Ebola vaccine. And I think first and foremost, the country has to really make sure that they're following protocols for treating a person that's highly infectious. So that was a very unfortunate incident that happened in Texas. However, I think what we're seeing with our vaccine candidate, which of course is not a treatment for Ebola, but actually will prevent people from contracting the disease, what we're seeing is a consortium of governments coming together, private sector, public sector, regulators, as well as charitable organizations to try to accelerate the development of this vaccine so it could be uh, used with those high-risk individuals, particularly healthcare workers. And I'm glad you drew the distinction between a treatment and a vaccine. Experts talk about the exponential growth of an epidemic. What is the ramp-up capability for manufacturing of this vaccine? Well, I think, fortunately, GSK actually has a pretty large footprint in biosecurity, so we do have the scale and scope to develop the vaccine um, in the case we need to go to large-scale production. Fortunately, part of the funding that we're getting from some of these charitable organizations is allowing us to plan for that development. So right now we are planning to produce 10,000 doses to help support the clinical trials. And we're also in the planning process to look to see if we have to go to larger scale production, how we can accomplish right. that. Don, I want to be very careful here, given the stress that you see on people's face in Texas. Is there a vaccine right now? There is not. This is the most promising vaccine. It was very effective in non-human trials. So we did expedite the process to move it into right. clinical trials. Well, no, I don't mean to interrupt. We, I mean, what are we waiting for? I mean, this morning when you speak to your team at GlaxoSmithKline, what are we waiting for? Well, first and foremost, we need to make sure the vaccine is safe. It, sh it hasn't been used in humans, so we cannot compromise safety. It would not do anyone any good if we were to right. introduce a vaccine that caused side effects. So the first phase is to make sure the vaccine is safe. The second phase is to make sure it does generate the immune response and is, and is actually effective. So that's yep. what these are trials are trying to accomplish. What she just said there is the first time I've heard anybody from the pharmacology industry actually explain this Spell process. It out. Yeah. That was great. Spelling it out is important. Uh, Don, I want to bring in our guest host for the hour, Bart Chilton, former commissioner of the CFT CFTC. Hey, Donna. You know, I was, around, I was working for Senator Daschle when the anthrax... Uh, was in our office back in 2001 and file, following 9-11. And I know that both at HHS and DOD, they're roughly spending about $5 billion a year. Uh, a couple of years ago, they had problems working together. But why has it taken so long? I mean, is it because there's no commercial application other than the, the government? But you know, people are wondering, I think, what's going on? What's the deal with the timing here? Well, I think, you know, there's multiple infections out in the world, and I think it's very hard to predict when one infection will really take off and cause a serious outbreak, as we're seeing with Ebola. So you're absolutely right. The DOD has actually been working on this vaccine candidate since 2003, but now that we see that Ebola is so prevalent, we're accelerating the process. So part of the challenge is the predictability around what disease is going to take effect and making sure that we have a process in place that when we see these types of epidemics, that there's a, a, process, a you know, guidance from an FDA perspective, there's support and guidance from a manufacturing perspective. So I do right. think there is a lot of policy opportunities as a result of this particular situation.